In this lecture, we introduce the node voltage method for determining currents and voltages in a circuit, and we show how to use this method for a circuit that contains an independent voltage and an independent current source. Well, as an introduction to the node voltage method, I'd like to use this circuit as an example. The circuit has one voltage source, one current source, and five resistors. Now in general we'd like to determine the voltage across and the current through all of the resistors and the node voltage method is one way that we do this. Now to apply the node voltage method we begin by identifying all of the nodes in this circuit that connect three or more elements. So here's one, here is one, there, and there. Now to distinguish between these nodes that connect three elements and a node like this one that connects only two, we sometimes call the nodes that connect three or more extraordinary nodes and the nodes that connect only two elements are called ordinary nodes. Well next we identify one of the nodes as the reference or ground node. This is often the node that connects the most elements. Now in this case each of the nodes connect three elements and so as is often done we'll usually pick the node at the bottom and typically circuits are drawn in a way that the node at the bottom is intended to be the reference node. Now the symbol we'll use for the reference node looks something like this. And this is also the symbol that's sometimes called the ground. So we're, we've identified now this node is our reference or ground. And what we'd like to do in the node voltage method is determine the voltage at each of these nodes relative to our reference node. So now what we'll do is we'll label each of these remaining nodes with a variable that will denote their voltage relative to the ground. So I'll call this one V1 this one V2, and this one V3. Now at each of these reference nodes, the next step is to systematically apply Kirchhoff's current law and write a set of equations for each of these nodes. So let's begin at node V1. Now at node V1 we have three currents and let me just give them a direction flowing out. And I'd like to write Kirchhoff's current law for those three currents. Now let's look at this one. This current is the voltage across that resistor divided by the resistance. Now the voltage across that resistor, on this side we have V1 relative to ground and on this side we have 6 volts relative to ground. So the voltage across this resistor is V1 minus 6 and the resistance is 4000 ohms. So when I'm writing these equations, I'm going to go ahead and suppress the units. So I'm not writing 6 volts and I'm not writing 4,000 ohms, but those are implicit and the units for every quantity will be amps. Next I'll look at the current through the 12,000 ohm resistor. The voltage across is V1 minus V2. Now keep in mind I want it to compute a current with a reference direction through the resistor in that direction so I need when I define the voltage it's the voltage at this side relative to this side so that's why I'm writing it as V1 minus V2. So that current out is V1 minus V2 divided by 12,000 and this current is V1 minus the reference and we're treating the reference as zero so that's just V1 minus 0 divided by 3000. And we'll set all that equal to 0 according to Kirchhoff's current law. 
Next we'll move to node at V2. Now at V2 we have the current flowing out through the 12 kilo ohm resistor. Now at V2 we're going to define that current in the opposite direction than we did at V1 and that's okay because we'll define that current flowing in that direction as V2 minus V1 over 12,000. So that'll be V2 minus V1 over 12,000. And then the current flowing in this direction, well, we've got a current source. So that's flowing into this node, so we'll subtract that one. And that's 3 times 10 to the minus third are 3 milliamps. And then the current flowing in this direction is V2 minus V3 over 6,000. And we'll set that equal to 0. Finally, we'll go to the node at the voltage that we've labeled V3. And that has V3 minus V2 over 6,000. That would be a current flowing out. And then flowing out in this direction this time is the 3 milliamps. So we'll add 3 times 10 to the minus third. And then in this direction is V3 minus 0 over 12,000. And that's all equal to 0. Now at this point we have three equations and three unknown voltages, V1, V2, and V3. So we should be able to solve those. Well let me rewrite those in a little more structured form. So I'll take the equation for the node at V1 and I'll gather all of the terms that involve V1. So I have 1 over 4,000, 1 over 12,000, and 1 over 3,000. If I add those up, put them all over 12,000, I'll have 3 over 12,000, 1 over 12,000, and 4 over 12,000. So that'll be 3 plus 1 plus 4 and that would be 8. So I have 8 over 12,000 times V1. And then for V2, I have negative 1 over 12,000. So I'll write that as minus 1 over 12,000 times V2. And I have no V3s. And then the constant term, I'll take all the constants to the other side of the equality. So in this case, on the left side of the equality, I have negative 6 over 4,000. When I take it to the other side, that'll be 6 over 4,000. Now let's look at the node 2 equation. For V1, I have negative 1 over 12,000. For V2, I have a 1 over 12,000 and a 1 over 6,000. So that's a 1 over 12,000 and a 2 over 6,000. So that's going to be a, a 2 over 12,000. So that's going to be 3 over 12,000. And for V3, we have a negative 1 over 6,000. And that's equal to the constant term is negative 3 times 10 to the minus 3. Take that to the other side. We'll have a 3 times 10 to the minus 3, or I'll write that as 3 over 1,000. And then finally for the node 3, we have no terms involving V3, V1 rather. We have a negative 1 over 6,000 times V2. And for V3, we have a 1 over 6,000 
plus a 1 over 12,000. That's like a 2 over 12,000 plus a 1 over 12,000. So that's 3 over 12,000 times v3. And that's equal to, well, we have a 3 times 10 to the minus 3 on this side. Take it to the other side. It'll be negative. That's a negative 3 over 1,000. So now I have it in a little more structured form. And if I'd like, I could put this into a matrix vector form. So I could make up a matrix of constant coefficients. It might look like this, 8 over 12,000, negative 1 over 12,000. So this is all this first equation. There's no coefficient for the v3 term. In the second one, I have a negative 1 over 12,000. I have a 3 over 12,000 and a negative 1 over 6,000. So that's the v3 term. And in the last, I have nothing for v1. I have negative 1 over 6,000 for v2, and I have 3 over 12,000 for v3. So then here's all of the variables, the v1, v2, and v3. And those are equal to 6 over 4,000, Three over 1,000 and negative 3 over 1,000. So we have a matrix times the vector of unknowns and the vector of knowns. This matrix is a reciprocal of resistances. So sometimes we'll use the capital letter G to denote that matrix because it has conductances in it. This is the unknown voltage vector, and that's all equal to a vector that's determined by currents. So if we want to solve for V, this would be the matrix G inverted times I. And that would give us the three unknown voltages. And once we know the voltages, we can determine any of the currents through Ohm's law. At this point, we need to solve this system of equations to determine the unknown voltages. We can use Kramer's rule to do this numerically. We can use a hand calculator. Or, as I'll show here, we can use a software package like MATLAB. Now, to use MATLAB, we'll first need to define the G matrix. So here I've set up a matrix whose first element is 8 over 12,000. Next element is negative 1 over 12,000. Next element in the first row is 0. And then with a semicolon, I begin the second row as negative 1 over 12,000, 3 over 12,000, negative 1 over 6,000. Then the colon tells me the third row would be 0, negative 1 over 6,000, and then 3 over 12,000. Then I'll define the vector of known current elements as 6 over 4,000 in its first row, 3 over 1,000 in its second row, and negative 3 over 1,000 in its third. And then finally, we'll solve for the voltage as the inverse of the matrix G times the current vector I. And that gives us values for those three known voltages. V1 is 3.4054 volts. V2, 9.2432 volts, and V3 is negative 5.8378 volts. And once we know each of these voltages, we're capable of solving for the voltage across and the current through any and all of the resistors in the circuit.